Welcome, everyone. This is part two of the Akai MIDI Mix working LED video, working with Voice Meter Potato. Uh, it has been a long time since I did part one, but I felt like I needed to do an update and to actually finish the video and show you all how I do it from scratch. So what I have set up here is Voice Feeder Potato with its default settings and with the default button maps as well. Uh, so on this screen here, you see a bunch of blank buttons. You see the Akai MIDI Mix, which is basically zeroed out now. And the Voice Meter Potato on the screen, as you would see it if you're doing a fresh install. So what I do recommend is before you start to make sure that you haven't made any changes to the Akai MIDI Mix software or control panel. So if you have, set it back to defaults. Otherwise, this won't, this tutorial will not work at all. All right, so let's get right into how this is gonna play. And we're gonna do the full tutorial here and hopefully not run into too many issues. All right, so the first thing that you want to do when setting this up is obviously, you see on the screen, we have a select main output device A1 and it is blinking red because we have no hardware set up. So I do have a cheap M Audio M Track Duo, which has been giving me nothing but problems, but I am gonna use it for this video to show you that even the cheapest audio interface this can <laughs> work with. So the first thing you wanna do is set your output. So we're gonna go up to A1 because this will be the output. And we have a few options here, at least I do, depending on what you're using, whether it could be the default device built in, you could have a real tech, you could have something like the M audio or something else completely like monitor speakers. So for me, what I want is the M track audio. And I'm actually gonna set WDM on this. I'm not gonna do I. ASIO simply because it's not too reliable in my situation. But if you had a better audio interface, then you could definitely do the go the ASIO route because then your latency, the round time trip, uh, would be better, and you wouldn't hear yourself echoing at all or maybe very little. Uh, but for myself, I'm going to be setting it to WDM, and most people will pick that as well. MME is the older Microsoft standard, but and WDM is the newer one. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And now you see voice meter has changed a little bit. We have 48 hertz across the board here, which is going to is the standard, or 44.1 kilohertz as well. Um, Right, so depending on how you're set up, this it should be either 44,100 or 48,000 hertz. All right, so now that we have that set up, you probably want to set up your microphone. So if you have a, a small audio interface like myself, you're going to want to go to hardware input one. You just click on it and then pick WDM and it should show up here depending on what you have. So depending on what you have, you just select it. I have the M audio. I'm gonna do that. And for a brief second, you did hear some echo. So what I did is turned off the output to that because I don't want it to feed back my, to myself. And also I'm recording with OBS, so I don't want it to be recording there either. So we got that straightened out. Now, when you're setting up this first time, you probably don't have to uncheck the A1, because that. but if you do hear yourself, then you know that it is working. Okay, so next, we're gonna move over to this screen here, which is the kind of the overview of everything at the moment. And as you can see at the top, we have a bunch of these are voice meter macro buttons, okay? So the, these can be programmed to do various things from pressing hotkeys to uh, controlling your MIDI controller and all kinds of sorted things as well. Uh, right now, they're completely unassigned. And then over on the top right, we have the Kai MIDI mix. So if you don't have one of these, this video is probably not for you. But as you can see, uh, 
I've been using this for a few years now, and it it has a little bit of maybe not wear and tear, but it, you can t definitely tell that it's used. And then we got voice meter potato. Now this all, will also work. This tutorial should also work with voice meter voice meter banana as well. You just won't have as many tracks or channels channel strips to to work with. All right, so let's get into actually programming this thing and getting the lights working on the Akai MIDI mix here. So we're going to go to the full screen display here. And we're going to go up to the menu in the top right corner. Click on that. And one thing you do have to do, though, is make sure that this is checked off. Run macro buttons on voice meter start. So if that's not checked and you don't see the buttons, then simply click on that and the buttons will load up as well. Okay, so we're going to go to system settings options. And this, I'm just taking you briefly in here just to kind of show you a couple things, but it's not really that important. The default should be okay. But if your buffer, buffering is too high and you're getting too much latency, you can adjust some of the settings in here to make them from 512, maybe down to 128 or 192, depending on your audio interface. And if you have it set up with ASIO, then you'll have a bunch of numbers in here that you can play around with to route the uh, input on your audio interface to strip in uh, voice meter potato okay so i did think i in the first video i touched on that a little bit but uh, you can go back there if you want to find out more about that okay so we're going to close that go back to menu and then we're going to go to midi mapping okay so the very first thing we can do very simply is let's say we want gain fader strip number one okay over on the left side here, you see the meters bouncing up and down. So if we want to control that with the Kai MIDI mix, it's very easy to do. All you do is click in the gain fader strip, click learn, okay, and take you back to this screen. And just move your slider up and down, okay, and that will start training it. So now when we go back over here, you'll see there's a green light blinking there beside MIDI input device, okay? And it says control change 19. Okay, so we know that it is working. And one thing you also want to do beforehand as well is make sure, just select a MIDI mix there. And if for some reason it's not showing up in the list, maybe try a different USB port, okay? So that is learned. And we can click off that because we know that's already been learned. Very simple with that. Uh, and that also applies to the rotary knobs as well. So if you wanted to, let's say, control the reverb, we can go down to the reverb section here, if I can find it. All right, so reverb strip number one. So we're just going to click in there, click learn again. I suppose the reverb is the second knob, and you can see control change seven sh showed up. And you can also see here that uh, I'm just rotating the knob back and forth, all right? So very simple. That's how you program the knobs in voice meter as well. Okay, so very simple to do. And we'll just get out of here. I don't think we need to be in here anymore. You can also name the MIDI map, so MIDI. We'll just call it Akai MIDI Mix, okay? And if you so desire, I do highly recommend you click the Save MIDI Map button because uh, sometimes voice meter seems to lose its settings uh, in Windows, and I don't know why. Most of the time it doesn't, but if for some reason it goes wrong, okay, so we just name that Akai MIDI Mix, hit Enter, and we should be good to go for that. So that would, that's how you program the basics parts of the MIDI mix. We're going to close that out and go back to this screen here. And oops. And you can see on the left side there, it's going from 0 to 10, 0 to 10. Very simple to do. All right. Uh, this is the newer version of voice meter as well so compared to the older one that I used in the previous video. So no issues there. 
So let's move on to the more complicated part, which is the LED buttons. Okay, so this is where I ran into issues and it took me quite a while to figure everything out, but I did figure it out eventually. All right, so what we're going to do here is go to the macro buttons. We're going to click here on this little box. Okay, and for the MIDI out device, we're just going to make sure that it's set to the MIDI mix. Okay. For output device number two, you can just leave that no MIDI or unchecked, but just make sure that MIDI mix is checked. Otherwise, this is not going to work. Okay. So we're going to right click on there. All right. So now that we're in the button configuration guide, we're going to name the button. So we're going to work from channel strip number one. We're just going to type mute. Sub button name, we'll just call it mute mic number one. You could put whatever you want in there, basically. Uh, we're going to set it to two positions, okay? So if it, it's normally in push button, but you want it in two position mode for this to work properly, okay? And for the keyboard shortcut, now you don't have to assign keyboard shortcuts to these, but I do because I have one button that basically mutes everything. And then what it does is it triggers the alt, alt, alt keys on the keyboard to mute them all at the same time. But you don't have to do that, at least not for this part of the video. Okay, so we're going to go to request for initial state. And we're going to type strip zero bracket dot mute equals zero semicolon. Okay, so strip means strip number one or channel number one in voice meter potato. Um, zero actually co corresponds to one. So that's that's just a computer thing. Everything starts at zero rather than one. Okay. Hit enter. System dot send MIDI bracket. Uh, make sure I don't have any typos here. Out one data 90.1.0 okay system key press bracket alt plus f1 semicolon and make sure everything is as you see it here otherwise it may not work correctly uppercase lowercase it seems to be case sensitive for a lot of this and i'm going to actually set the keyboard shortcut back to alt f1 as well for the purposes of this demonstration if i can actually find it alt f1 okay all right so the purpose of the key press is so that the board the, the akai midi mix remains in sync that way when you turn off the software the mute button or whatever buttons are going to actually stay on and off so we, every time we start up the software to make sure that the kai midi mix lights are synced up so we always set it to a default state okay and then the send midi command here system dot send midi this is what actually controls the light so we're sending it out on midi bus number one and we're sending data 90 1 and 0 and this is very important so it's a, it's pretty much going to be 90 for everything when it comes to the kai midi mix and the and one is because this is basically literally the first button on the controller as far as programming goes and then zero represents uh on or off of that button so the values can be from 0 to 7F in hexadecimal uh, or 255. Uh, anything above 0 technically should work, but I always set it to a little higher number when I want to turn it on. But to turn it off, it's always going to be 0. Okay. Then we're going to move down to request for button on, trigger in. Okay. So we're going to type strip 0 again, mute equals 1. And then system dot send send uh, midi okay out one data 91 7f and hopefully i don't have any typos because i tried to actually do this video yesterday 
and it turns out I had some typos and it was making things very difficult for the recording. So I'm basically redoing the entire video today and <laughs> there was an audio issue too. So I just said, the heck with it. I'm just going to redo it from scratch. All right. All right. So the only difference between this and the other line is we have mute equals one. Okay. So when we hit the button, we want to mute that strip. And instead of zero, we have seven F. So that's the highest possible value theoretical value that should work to turn the LED on and off. Okay, and then we're gonna go, I uh, should turn it on, I should say, muting on, right? And then we're gonna go into request for button off. So strip zero dot mute equals zero. And actually I have another, I have a typo in here. That should be zero, right? Again, with the typos, you got to make sure that you're very precise with this. Okay. And then system.send MIDI out one data 917F. Right. Or zero, I should say. Should be zero to turn the button off. Okay. So the programming part is set up now. All we need to do is tell it which button it is. So we're going to click learn from MIDI mapping device. And then on the MIDI mix, let's bring up the other screen. We're going to hit the mute button. And as you can see, now it shows pound one note on C sharp dash two, et cetera, et cetera. So it's basically the MIDI data that's received, All right? So we sh should be good to go there. We can hit okay. And now you see mute mic number one, shortcut key is alt F1 and then mode is 2P, which stands for basically on and off. It's a two, two mode button. All right, so let's see if it works. Let's move over to the screen. Ah, uh, there you go. It is working. Okay. So the macro key in the top left corner is off right now. And the mute button on the Kai MIDI mix is off right now. Okay. Now they're on. All right. There we go. Look at this. It's magic. <laughs> Anyways. So we have this working, L gotta love it. Right, so now we're gonna do the record, record arm button. So we're moving back to this screen. We're gonna right click on the button configuration again. And I'm gonna bring up my notes because I don't have them handy. And we're gonna go to button name. We're gonna say monitor arm to position just like the last time we're going to say channel one request for initial state so very similar to the last one all right and then system send midi out one data 93 so we're using three this time because this is technically the third button in a midi mix terms okay and then zero because we want it off and I, again i keep putting in these extra brackets everywhere i don't know why all right we'll move down to the next field strip zero a one equals one all right so a1 is the output right so to your headphones and etc etc l system dot send midi out one data 93 7f bracket and i didn't put the bracket time good and i didn't put the bracket that time good for me and we'll move down to request for a button trigger off okay strip 
zero a one equals zero and then we'll go system send midi bracket out one data 93 and zero and that should work for that we'll hit okay and now when we go to the other screen here we see that it is not working so i did something wrong somewhere so let's go back strip zero a1 equals zero i probably have a typo somewhere all right so pretty obvious mistake you probably caught it before i did but i forgot to do the learn from midi mapping device so we'll go back here we're just gonna click in there and boom there it is okay now we'll hit okay and head back to this screen and let's see if it's working yes it is all right so we got a red arm button working on and off very good hopefully you're all following along so far not too problematic it just takes some time to get used to this whole system all right so the next uh Thing. Now, all the other strips can be programmed the same way, which I'm not going to go through. But you do have, at least in Voice Meter Potato, you have strips 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So actually, it's almost the perfect number of strips for this thing. So if you wanted to control each one of these things, you definitely could. And actually, for these strips, you could control the knobs uh, via the treble, bass, and mid-range frequencies as well or you could maybe do something funky with the the panning as well but we're not going to do that um now there is one other button that's kind of a outlier it's called the solo button over here okay so the so solar solo button if you hold it down see how the mute button changes so what's basically happening is that it's creating another set of buttons along the whole row and that actually corresponds with different midi notes so the it'll actually it almost acts like a second set of buttons uh and this can be used to do a bunch of creative things with it as well all right so let's try something funky with the solo button Something I did not know, and now that I know it, I'll probably utilize it as well. I realized this in the make while I was making this particular video. So let's do that. So let's go over to here and we'll right click and we're gonna call this solo strip one. And we're gonna make sure that's set to two positions. Initial state we're not gonna worry about at the moment. Okay, and then we're going to strip zero solo equals one system send MIDI out one data 90 and two seven F semicolon. Now, what I realized is that. The reason why the number was jumping from 1 to 3 and 4 to 6 is because that second number in, in the code was actually for the solo button. So I'll demonstrate that for you in a moment. I'm just going to enter this in here. And then strip 0 solo equals 0. System send MIDI out data 92.0 to turn it off and then we go to here learn from and i'm gonna hold down the solo button and as you can see a note comes up there note uh, d sharp 027 but that's not actually the note we want so well, i'm actually still holding down the solo button and i'm also going to hit the mute button at the same time on strip number one and now see it changes to D dash to 
D dash two two, right? So now we can go okay. Let's just check, make sure I made no typos and it looks okay. And if I just hit the solo button, nothing is happening. If I hit the solo and the mute button, now it shows up on the screen. So you could use that as a function or an alternate sort of function key for that. So you could set it up however you want. You could set it up for alternate keys or maybe on the buses over here. Or perhaps you want to change, mute these for some reason. I mean, yeah, that'd probably be helpful. So there you go. That is just another feature of the Kai MIDI mix. So you can go ahead and use that to your heart's content. All right. So let's say we're going to call this solo and we're going to call it, I don't know, two positions. We're not going to set, set an initial state, but what we are going to do back to your button configuration and do a hotkey in here. So for instance, we'll try uh, system key press control plus alt plus M. We'll just say this is, we're going to pretend this is going to be a mute or something for OBS later. Don't forget the necessary punctuation. Okay, we'll copy that to here. And now that we're not going to be using that, we'll just go like that and delete those. Okay. And for unmute. Okay, so mute and unmute. That's just what we're going to take over to OBS eventually. Okay, so we still have it there and there and we're going to hit OK. Okay, so the shortcut keys are there now. All right, through the magic of editing, we have a portable OBS version open now. We I did skip over a little bit here. Uh, but yeah, so we have the portable version of OBS open. And we're going to make it so that this mic is muted via the solo button i suppose on the controller now you can use anything you want really but anyway so we're going to go to open settings and hotkeys we're going to scroll down and i've actually already set it to this as well so control alt m and control alt u you basically click in there hold down the control key hold down the m key and or the alt key and the m key so I'll, I'll just do it control alt m all at the same time okay and hit okay so now pretty sure the reason this wasn't working is because voice meter has to have something assigned to it rather than just the key press so um no that shouldn't be the case So what we're going to do, instead of using the solo button plus the mute button, we're just going to reset that. We're just going to hit solo button and then hit OK. All right, through the magic of recording again, or editing, I should say, there are some issues between voice meter and OBS right now. Unfortunately, there seems to be some sort of a a key stuck issue. I don't know why it's happening. I sort of worked around it um, and got it working, but your mileage may vary in this situation. So what I ended up doing is going back to the macro buttons here and changing the button from solo over to the bank left button on the desktop right over here. All right. And I also clicked in here and made a bunch of different changes. So I changed it to data 9019, which is basically one of the last buttons that you can program on this thing. And 
I played around with key press, key up and key down to try to get it working correctly. Two positions uh, or push button. Nothing was really working uh, with OBS. But then I found out uh, that the key keys were getting stuck when I was doing this. So I would have to hit the hold down the control key or the alt key and do it a second time to get it unstuck because it was having weird behavior on my system. I changed it all back to key presses and then I went back to OBS and it was working. So you can see here it's muting on and off. Bank left. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just one of those weird things that I don't know why it's happening. So if for some reason you try to program it like this and it's not working, just make sure that your keys are not stuck in either the control position, alt position, or one of the other keys are stuck down. And you'll know this because if you try to scroll a web page or or go into another program, it'll start doing strange things. So just hit those keys on the keyboard to get out of that mess up if that happens too. So you may not get it working. I don't know why it's working. Maybe it's an OBS bug or maybe both programs are trying to f fight over the hotkeys, but it is working right now and I don't know if it's going to continue to work. So anyways, just we'll keep it at that. And then probably the last thing I am going to show you is the rest of the, the key codes because I know some of the people in the previous video had questions why or the MIDI codes, not the key codes. The MIDI codes were not working for them. So I have a document that I'm going to upload to the website that, and put in the description of the video that will help you along. And I'm going to bring that up on the screen here. All right. So this is just a text document that I made uh, with the different codes. So as you know, or as you can see, it goes from one to three on the first strip and then four to six, okay? So I'm not sure why this skip numbers in there. I think maybe two might actually be associated with the solo strip. I'll have to test that out in another video maybe. Uh, but So it goes from one, three, four, six, seven, nine, and then A and C. Oh, what's going on here, you might ask? That's because it's all in hexadecimal uh, or base, six, base 15. So if you don't know what base 15 is, it's basically zero to nine, and then after nine it goes, a, B, C, D, E, F, and then it goes back to two, right? So if you don't know anything about it, you probably should look it up. If you don't care about it, then don't look it up. It's not really that big of a deal. You just need to know to look at the MIDI codes for this. And depending on, if you might actually have another Akai device, the MIDI codes are, are completely different. So you'd have to find out what that is as well. So we go seven to nine, A to C, D, F, and then on hardware strip number six, it goes 10 to 12, okay? Seven is 13 and 15, and eight is 16, 18, and then bank on and bank off is 19. I seem to be having issues with my M audio device. The left channel is on, but the right channel keeps randomly kicking out. And this thing's only a couple months old. I think I'm gonna to try to get my money back for it. But anyhow, um, that's neither here nor there. But bank left on is 19 and bank right on is 1A, all right? So you have that in there. And there is actually a website as well that you can go to if you want to find out more about the programming of the Akai, Akai MIDI Mix. So I'll put that in the description as well. It's, it's actually a Google document that I found and I'll put that in there as well. So... Hopefully you don't have any more questions or concerns about how to program your voice meter potato. Um, you might have seen my other video where I was looking at the con other MIDI controller I have. Uh, I'll probably have to do a programming tutorial on that one as well so that you could use it for OBS, voice meter, or whatever you want. Uh, I know it's primarily for Ableton or Ableton or however you want to pronounce it, but you know, it can be used for other things, and I use it for doing OBS scenes and 
doing like sound pads. I have a little program that will play sound effects and whatnot. So, but you can basically program it any way you want. There's lots of MIDI software out there. But I m might do a tutorial on that one as well on how to program that one. All right. So hopefully that's all you need. If you have any questions, you can go into the comments and ask me. Please like and subscribe to this video. And we'll see you in the next one.